So this is the designing effective product pages. And we're going to focus tonight on six key elements that really impact how, how, your pay, how your page or your service, the product or service is received. And if you have questions as we're going, I want to encourage you to utilize the Discord channel. If you're new here or, or you're watching the recording of this, um, know that there is a new Pragmatic Discord channel that you can participate in as we go. And you can be ask questions at, at all the way through the, through the program. So, so the guiding principles, we're going to focus on six key elements that will really make a, a big impact on how people, how people receive your, uh, your product or the page. And the first one is obviously focus. We, there should be no confusion about what is going on when somebody lands on your product page. Here is an example from, from uh, Brooks Running. And it's pretty clear, everything that's associated with what's on the screen right now is associated with this particular running shoe. Um, it, it's, it all comes down to helpful information uh, regarding uh, the shipping, the name, name of the shoe, the price of the shoe, the different, the different uh, options or colors of the shoe, different photos of the shoe, um, the ability to see the shoe larger. Everything is about this particular shoe. And um, this is really important because we don't want to get confused about what it is that we're, that we're being sold when we, when we um, land on one, one of these pages. And we'll look at some options where other things sneak their way in. Um, but if somebody, if you're working with a client and they've got this idea for upselling you into other elements, um, uh, push back and remind them that the focus is on selling a particular product. And you'll all, because you always have the, the opportunity to upsell later. Um, Nike is another, another brand that does a really good job of really focusing on the singular product um, great use of photography really throughout clear um, clear controls uh, everything is really utilizing a nice clean grid you really get a sense of what the shoe looks like from a multitude of different angles and I really in a lot of ways I like this more than the Brooks option because um, with the Brooks option option you have to think to to click the other angles uh, here it's just presented to you and and this gets us really to that to the second principle of effective of effect, effective product pages, and that's photography. Regardless of what it is that you're selling, effective photography is going to draw in more customers, and they want to see it in different ways. And I'll jump into what I mean by that in a second. A lot of sites that you'll work on are like shopping sites where they'll be presenting hundreds of items. Yet when you get down to the product page, it's all about, can I see that particular item in different ways? Here, we, we're seeing it on different models. Here, we're also seeing it in a studio shot. We're also seeing it outside. They are, uh, this Bohemian Trader site is really trying to show you different ways that you could wear this garment. And I think that's really important. Rather than showing you the same shot and the same lighting, it's allowing you to see see the the item in action. I'm less of a fan of the design of the site. It's called the horse, but I'm really a fan of how they utilize photography on this site. So if I if I were to click on the bag here, it literally just like wipes everything away and focuses only on the bag. If you hover around it, it will zoom in. But the, the real key here is I'm going to really focus just on the bag. Additionally, I, I love the surprise moment that you get when you're scrolling through here and you come upon the gigantic photo presentation. It's, it's nearly life size. Now this is lazy loading, so it's not going to slow down the site on first 
on first load. I'm just going to scroll back up to the top. On first load, just this top portion of the site is loading. And then as you scroll down, the rest of this begins to load. And that's why this site loads relatively quickly while also having this gigantic photo at the bottom. Now, Rent the Runway is not a site that I immediately pulled out as, ooh, look at the great photography, look at how they're utilizing photos here. But somebody, somebody had tipped me off as this is one of their favorite shopping sites. And they explained to me that it really has a robust consumer or customer angle for allowing you to see the photography um, as it's being used by real people. So I want you to think about people taking Instagram selfies and things like that. Rather than focusing on the actual shape and color of this particular dress, the, you know, like I said, I was kind of mad when, when I went to the site, I'm like, I, I don't get it. But then I went up here to customer photos. And when you go down to customer photos, you get things like this. And this shows and you know, Rent the run Runway is, is mostly geared toward women who are trying to get glamorous dresses and, and accessories. But this shows what those things look like in the wild. So like at the dance, at the party, at the grocery store. It's, it's amazing the, ty the different types of photos people will upload to show them out and about. Um, I'm pretty sure that, you know, she's chilling out in the freezer section somewhere. Um, this is the user generated content that people are so thirsty for, um, online. They, they want to see the product in action. They don't want to see the product necessarily just in these staged studio shots. So finding a way to allow for people to submit that, that in is, is really key. And it's something to think about when you're, when you're talking about, you know, oh, do you want to leave a review? Not only is it leaving a review, like because this is a review. It's a, it, this one's a short review by comparison with this one. This one's more of a robust review, but it's really about the photo. And uh, user generated photo, uh, user submitted photos are a big plus when it comes time to to really um, consider a purchase uh, of a product or service because, frankly, it's social proof. And you know. Studies are out there, 90% and above everything we buy, we look for social proof. Um, regard, it, does, it doesn't matter what it is. Um, it could be food, like this is a Yelp site of uh, food. And obviously these, these shots were, were posted probably by the restaurant, but um, you obviously ha also have the ability to upload photos as a user. But you know, social proof, it's right there right there and literally a star the star rating it's the first thing that we go to whether it's you know a restaurant a book you know right there right there at the top anybody ever considered the the quality rating of the movie elf of course you have you know, what's the rotten tomato score we we're all familiar with social proof same thing amazon how many times how many times have you went and specifically sought out the star rating on on a product and this has 2100 ratings and s nearly 700 an an questions answered about this smartwatch now the importance of social proof is so high that Amazon actually buries it on their site to give you a sense of where these reviews and ratings are stored at you have to zoom down the page to an area for customer reviews and Amazon does the, the does the the sin that I was talking about earlier this I, I, I was searching for a pair of running shoes here and they've snuck in an ad for Giordano's pizza I, I I'm here for the customer reviews I am not here for the pizza so when you when your boss or your colleague tries to get you to sneak in third-party ads because that'll draw draw a little bit of incremental revenue. Just know that it's not enough. It's not enough. And this is an ad for Amazon. So it's an ad to make you buy pizza from Amazon. I got to think that, that this is a waste of time for them. Additionally, 
this is the page that that was from. And as you, as you look through here, you'll notice I go through one, two, two and a half pages of content before I actually make it to the customer reviews. That's how, that's how great social proof is. That's how much we seek it out. That's not a great experience for the user, mind you. This is actually a really terrible experience for the user. Nike does something similar. Here is a, here is a, a Nike, the way Nike uh, positions a very similar product. And as you can see, the social proof for Ni Nike is basically at the end of the main images. Like they, they have all their images. And, and another thing that I, I love is the fact that Nike doesn't put them into a typical carousel. It just shows them. It shows them so and it makes sure that makes sure that you don't miss any of them. But as we look here at the social proof for Nike, you'll notice that this isn't you submitting your images to Nike. This is you submitting your images to Instagram and just mentioning Nike. So this is another angle for collecting user generated images is having people talk about or encouraging people to talk about your brand online and then harvesting those back out. I think it's a really smart angle. Um, it also lightens the engineering load a bit, to be completely honest with you. Um, instead of having to build out a way for people to submit photos, you could just leverage the Instagram API. Um, or you could just manually pull those over. Whatever, whatever you want to do, it's a, it's a lighter lift than building your own ingestion engine for people to submit. Additionally, when we're talking about social proof, it doesn't always have to have a photo. Like there's, there's nothing wrong with just having a straight up review rating, uh, some details and a quote. Like this is just as strong as having the images. And there are a lot of products that might not have an image. Like, like if you ordered ingredients and I was talking about the quality of the ingredients, I might not necessarily have an image to submit back for the bag of bag of raspberry dust that I got from you or whatever. Um, so, so reviews really matter, play them cleanly, give them space and they'll, and they'll, and they'll work well for you. Scannable descriptions. Scannable descriptions are, um, really about elevating and leveraging the content that you have on a particular product and presented it in such a way that it doesn't require the user to dig really hard to get to the information that they are seeking. If you know your user, if you've done your research, you'll know what content they're really after. And that means that you have an editing task ahead of you you have an editing task to get rid of the information that they don't necessarily need so you can focus it. Um, co the comparison here is, is couldn't be starker. On the left, I have Amazon selling AirPods. On the right, I have Apple selling AirPods. Obviously, Apple is more vested in selling the AirPods than Amazon is because Amazon has like a billion different things to, to sell and it's trying to cram every product into the same basic shape where Apple is saying I, c I can take over the entire thing and do a custom design for this specific product. That's the that's the big difference here. Um, that's not to say that Amazon is bad and that's not to say that Apple is right. It is to point out that they are uniquely different things. One is like a big box store like a Walmart or Target or any big box store you can think of. The other one is like a boutique that sells one to 10 things and that's all they sell. And they're not going to, they're not going to clutter their, 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 their showroom floor with anything else. Let's look at the experience. So this is Amazon. You'll, you'll notice right away. It looks a lot like the, the shoes because it's the, the exact same form that's being used. And the social proof is here on page two. So it's a little shorter. Um, there's a little comparison uh, about the different Air AirPods that you could buy, but let's look at how Apple presents that same information. Radically different. This is a product page. It's no different than the Amazon page, 
but it's indigestible chunk chunks it's large images it's broken down into scan like everything that you would want to know about the airpods is here it is missing social proof i'm not going to not going to hide behind it there is no rating listed in this particular area of the of the um of the product page so it's m missing and that's one thing i would point out all these guiding principles i rarely see them all at the same time i either see great photography and a little bit of social proof um you know i could even say the pricing here is obscured because there there's no price listed until you say i want to buy it and we'll, we'll show that in a minute but how could we get any different well let's talk about bathtubs i know that i know that bathtubs seem pretty obtuse um but when you're comparing them you know i've, I've been talking about apple all right and and it you know apple is it's it's always easy to get picked on in design when you when you talk about Apple because hey, of course Apple's great, of course they spend a lot of time presenting their presenting their products in a very beautiful manner, but what about a bathtub? You know I've got Home Depot and Amazon here, and as you can see, Home Depot and Amazon are both showing you toilets and faucets and comparison charts. And for some reason, I've got an Under Armour ad on the Amazon one. I've got just a lot of stuff that isn't necessarily related to that bathtub. But if I were to go to the bathtub maker site, this is uh, Boots Bathtubs, this is the same tub being presented on the site of the maker. And notice just how much closer it is to the Apple mentality. Yes, there's not a lot of imagery here, but the information is easy to consume. If I was really wanting to do my research, I would probably focus on going to the going to the manufacturer. It is interesting that the manufacturer, if I got it directly from the manufacturer, it's two hundred fifty-two dollars. If I got it from um, Amazon or Best Buy, or uh, not Best Buy, but Home Depot, it is more, or and not it is more, it is less, significantly less. Um, and we'll talk about that pricing aspect here in just a moment. But I was able to pick out the price. I was able to see what the technical specs are, the product information, the related videos. Like I can see all that, even though I'm not zoomed very close to the image itself right now, I can see that from afar. I can't see anything over here. It's just, it's just, there's just too much. I can't make it out. So, so these, these individual manufacturers they produce stronger, um, stronger uh, scannable pages because they're more vested. You know, they have sm they have fewer products to sell, so of course they're going to present them in a more attractive way. Um, having clear call to actions or CTAs is um, it, it seems like an obvious thing, but. A lot of people hinge on, oh, you want me to put a button on there? Got it. And it's like, well, it's not just the button. This is also about what is the what does the button say? This is also about the information around the button. What all the things that go into making it easy for me to say, yes, I want to buy that. Yes, I want to sign up for your service. Yes, I want that thing. So here's here's one of the first options that popped into mind. I said, you know, well, Audible. Audible's a, a pretty good platform. I wonder what their what their you know what their product is like on like the homepage. And when you talk about services like Audible, the product is you know signing up for a service where you can select titles as you go. And as you look at this, you know get three titles from Audible on us. And there's this try click the try Audible free button here in the middle. Um, it's frankly kind of messy there's like a lot of stuff going on um, if anything I, I really think that this this button uh, should probably be larger maybe sign in with your Amazon account should be in here so that button could be larger we, we could clean this up um, I don't I don't really feel like it's a, a fantastic way to to kind of introduce me to the brand on the flip side we have Spotify Spotify view plans that's the only thing up here. 
yes i could go click on help or sign up or log in but the the thing that's the black button with the white type inside is view plans that's clearly what they're trying to get me to do and that is an obvious call to action you know it does help try premium free for three months view the plans simple lightweight easy to understand Oaklandish uh, t-shirt brand that I follow from the Bay Area you know it's pretty clear that aside from selecting a size which I have I selected that uh, small then I got this this uh, gold button available to me without selecting a size the button is gray this uh, this is pretty clear to me that what I should do is I should I should go through here and select the size and then I go down to add to cart um, that add to cart thing it seems obvious to you and me that it should be above the fold but if I go over here oh obviously I'm a, I'm a slide ahead of myself but here's daily harvest and we've seen a couple of items from daily harvest already um, daily harvest is basically a a um, smoothie ordering service um, it's very clear that get started is really the only thing that I can click here there's no other call to actions here you know it tells me the benefits it kind of says hey you know what um, do you need digestive support or immunity boosting or or anti-inflammatory um, foods well you should get started here like it's walking you up like it's saying here are the benefits you should get started rather than saving the benefits for later or moving the benefits up to the top it's it's strategically packaged those together to, to say hey you know do you want immunity boosting you should get started you should click right here back to Apple Apple shows us a really good example of a flow to get us to the point here we are we're looking at the Mac mini and the Mac mini is just sitting there in the middle of the screen looks like a hockey puck looks like an Apple TV to be honest with you um, re-engineered in no small way the only thing that we are drawn to click on here is this blue buy button right here if we click on that it takes us to a screen that is very sparse it says choose your Mac mini now when I first saw this I thought I was you know I thought I was supposed to like click on one or the other but it scrolls and when it scrolls you can either click select for the 799 model or click select for the 1099 model either way you go it's pretty clear it's one or the other I also like the fact that they use color for action so if I wanted to contact somebody it's the it's the blue link get started it's the blue link learn more it's the blue link it's very consistent all the way through if I want to learn more about daily cash back can do it right there now we're back here at the bathtub and if you've got questions as we're going feel free to jump into into the general channel I'm I'm watching I know Luigi's in there Shane's hanging out I see a few of you lurking around um, this is a bathtub this is a $145 bathtub and I am looking at it right now and th this is a screenshot uh, that I took and I could not for the life of me figure out how to buy this bathtub and that is because you have to scroll down you can pick it up in store or they can deliver it to you either way it is not on the screen when you actually open up the site Home Depot um, there's plenty of room to do this it's not like this is this is, would be something hard to slide in but because it's hidden from view of the user this is not an obvious action because we're trained over here on Amazon that we can always add at the cart because it's always on screen because it's always at the top I can add the cart I can buy now but it's more than just adding it to cart and buying now it's also free delivery it's also there's only one in stock so these little bits of information help the user make a determination on oh man only one sock I better get it right now and I say that knowing that some companies 
like booking.com abuse this oh that's that hotel just sold out you can't use that one anymore I hate those that that sort of usage I hate this when there's one left in stock my, my, my thought is when there's none left in stock I get the opportunity to continue and, and say well email me when it is in stock I get there's some actual benefit to being able to view this information um, but this I, I this is helpful information that has been included that helps me determine determine what action I'm going to take the final piece of the puzzle is pricing and I can't tell you how many times I found it frustrating uh, looking at a site or looking at a service and wanting to utilize a service or site but feeling like I couldn't trust or find at, uh, the pricing information so sometimes it's very easy as much as I bagged on Home Depot for hiding the buy button I do appreciate the fact that the largest thing on the screen is the the price it's hundred and forty five dollars I appreciate that 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 makes it a much easier decision remember from the boots side it was a hundred dollars more for the same bathtub it makes it easy to do that comparison shopping Additionally, look at Apple. Everything else here is basically the same. You know, same image of the, of the computer, same 6% cash back, same select button. It's the price difference. And yes, there is some, there are some detail differences um, to, the, to the element above. Like you got a quad core and a six core. I get that. But it's the price difference that jumps out. And then once we see the price difference, then we look, oh, well, why is this one $300 more than that one? And then we go through the details. This is a um, a hotel site uh, in Ibiza, and I really appreciate it when there's clarity to not only the price, what's flexible, what isn't, but also what are the taxes. I d I don't know what the tax rate is in Ibiza, so the fact that they've included those in the nightly in the nightly charge is helpful to me as a traveler because it's all rolled up right there. Simplifying these things for a user, it, it, it's what Steve Krug talks about in, in the book, Don't Make Me Think. Literally, don't make them think. You know, if I, click the, if I click on this in the States, half the time it's like, oh, and now you have a $35 resort fee or some other hidden fee. Don't make them think. Make it simple, make it clear, push, your peers push your bosses to make pricing and basically just anything involving a product or service transparent so it's easier for people to make decisions and then finally um, this is rent the runway again and while I talked about it, I like their customer photos I also like the fact that they they really focus in on they've got they've got two ways that you can do this you can have a monthly membership or you can rent it once um, and you can rent this jacket here for 60 to 70 dollars um, you can rent it for four days I'm sure that the price depends on where you live at because it's like if I got to ship it to Arizona it's different than shipping it to Virginia um, but this unlimited $69 a month trial a month um, this this really lays it out clearly what my options are there there is no um, upsell intended for later it's either I want to reserve it for a couple of days or I want to do it I want to get this and I want to be able to get as many things over and over and over again as I want so if you are ready if you're watching this and you're ready to take the next evolutionary step in your design career I invite you to join us over at newpragmatic.com. If you have questions, uh, you can obviously uh, attach them to the bottom of this YouTube video, or you can email me directly, chris at newpragmatic.com. And that's it for our weekly workshop tonight. I hope you found this to be um, informative, and I hope to see you all in the feedback loop tomorrow morning. Take care.